Hey, Simon here, and I just released this article about Deus Ex, uh, Mankind Divided, about how they blend the Terrang with opaque objects so that you have a soft intersection. You can see this here, uh, especially at the beginning, this rock blends very softly with the Terrang and also other opaque objects. And I would like to show you the setup for this in Unreal. Um, or just document it. So we start with a simple terrain and another opaque object and I will just apply our um, terrain material and so so far it's kind of simple uh, when your terrain material or material in general is translucent which it is then you can use a depth fade node to blend softly with something else. So just so that you see how this looks this is the depth fade there's a step fade node, there's nothing special, and up here is the Terrain color. So, yeah, that's so far very normal. The problem with um, translucent materials is that often you have sorting issues, like you can see here. Sometimes you see polygons which are actually behind the current surface, but they still render because uh, translucent objects do not render in the depth buffer, and the depth buffer is usually um, used to act, yeah, determine which pixel is in front of uh, another one. And yeah, so uh, since this material does not write into the depth buffer, it cannot make use of this technology. And uh, yeah, so that's the problem. Just a side note, by the way, uh, here this video is about, uh, uh, it's about, let me see, um, order independent translucency. And this is a new technology which was just introduced and could help with these issues, but uh, we will not use that for now. Um, so what we have to do is we have to write into the custom dev buffer and we can do this. It, it's, it's a little workaround. I think in Unity it would work directly in the shader, but here we cannot uh, let uh, translucent ma materials render into the dev buffer. So we have to make a little workaround. So here uh, in Unreal we see, uh, look at the custom dev. Then here I will just uh, duplicate this terrain and name it to custom dev. And uh, then down here in the um, rendering options you can set render custom dev. I will enable this and now we will still see nothing because um, the material is still applied and the material is translucent and as I said translucent objects do not render in the dev buffer. So just remove this here so now we see it in the custom dev buffer and then we can go into our lit mode again and we see it now on top of everything. We don't want this. We only want to render this into the dev buffer. So we can uh, search for main and here we can disable uh, render in main pass. So we can just disable that. And now we have this black stuff here and now we have to disable that it renders into the normal uh, dev buffer. We only want to have it render into the custom dev buffer. So the first check mark should be unchecked, which we will do now. Um, so that's good. And uh, this black stuff can be removed by disabling the shadows for this mesh. So, okay, just to summarize, the normal uh, scene depth looks, where is it, uh, like this, there are just the, the boxes in there, and then we have the custom depth, which is just our terrain. Okay, so now what we can do is in the material we can compare the currently rendered pixel so when this terrain is rendered uh, it can now compare itself uh, the position of the current rendered pixel to the depth information which are uh, in here and then it could say hey if this uh, if the new um, pixel which is rendered is behind uh, then please don't render it so um, Let's have a look at the material itself. So there are two methods. I will just zoom out. This is an unprecise and older method and this is the stuff we actually need. Um, just so that you know, this one here is um, based on this one thread I found here. Uh, I will link it in the video description. And it is a bit, uh, it, it works, yeah, but it is a little bit unprecise and uh, it could be simplified. For example, here we calculate the position to the pixel, yeah, uh, from the camera to the pixel, and then convert it into the from world space into view space, and then take uh, the B component, which is the, yeah, the the set component basically, so the distance to um, the partic uh, to the to the pixel, and all of this could be simplified by just using pixel dev. So we can just use this, 
and actually we can then put this in directly here and compare it now. So the current uh, rendered pixel is now compared to the information we already have in our custom dev. And depending on if the value is bigger, smaller or equal, we either print out or return zero or one, which gives us a nice opacity mask. So just that you see how this looks, what we can do here is I have this material instance and I can just uh, say debug opacity and then we will see it's all black. And the reason is that it only works, it seems, for very close pixels. So the precision in the distance seems to be very, very low. At least that's my interpretation here. Uh, and there's a little workaround here. That's why we can make the, the values, the distance uh, to the current pixel, which we calculate, a little bit smaller so that we kind of generate a little threshold for the comparison here. And if we do that, we can actually, oh, sorry, that was the wrong, um, this was the wrong button. It actually works. So now uh, we, we see our, we, we see the, the, the triangles or the pixels, which are behind the hill and should not be rendered in black. And so when we, um, yeah, when we disable the debug view, now everything works. So now we got rid of these uh, uh, sorting problems. So that's very nice. So it, it works. The problem is when we scale this up here, let's see, um, uh, let's say I would scale this to 500 to 500 to 500. Uh, then we see that the terrain is actually not rendered anymore because this pixel gets discarded and so this is not uh, very good. Um, so here I have the option to enable the high precision mode. So when I enable this, uh, it works actually very, very well and we still have our uh, correct sorting even with such a big scale. And of course, it also works when we go um, into our smaller scale again, yeah, we still have nice precision here. And so what you have to do, so this you can forget basically, but this is the good stuff here. And this goes to especially Deathray from the Unreal Slackers uh, Discord, who, who explained a lot of this and showed uh, all of uh, us how this works. And also Harlist who, who prepared an example. So the basic idea is, um, Again, taking pixel dev and the custom dev, so that's what we did below. And then to get very good precision, we need a little HLSL custom node. So you can just type custom, it's not, nothing special here. And this is the setup. And the important thing here, oops, is this. Convert to device set X and X is here. This is the little input. This is what we feed in. And to be honest, I can't really explain what happens, but it has something to do with precision and how the scene dev is written or read or something like that. But this gives you good values, let's say it like that. And if you have more questions, <laughs> come to the Unreal Slackers and ask that way. Uh, it's weird stuff. So anyway, the good stuff is um, here you see we have the custom node. Uh, it's two times the same thing. And uh, scene dev, pixel dev, nothing special. Here we have the X uh, now, and it is so precise that we don't even need this little trick with the with the multiplying the values or using any bias or anything. It's just working, and yeah, this is uh, this is just good. And then we feed it in our material. I, I will also um, link a screenshot to this material in the YouTube description. And yeah, it just works. It's really really nice. So now we have a translucent terrain. Uh, no sorting issues and we have uh, the capability of death fade so that we can fade softly with our other opaque geometry. So that's nice. Uh, I hope you learned something. Bye bye.